What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my pod where I'm pushing positivity, purpose, and peace to all student athletes because I believe with these three Ps, not only will you have success in your sport, but y'all, you're going to have success overall in your life. My goal is to equip student athletes to manage adversity on and off the court. Our guest today is Haley Marsh. Haley played in high school and lettered five times between basketball and soccer. She even was team captain all four years for basketball and won SPSL South Puget Sound League Most Honorable Mention. She continued her college career at Pacific Lutheran University, where she also majored in business. And now, this girl is giving back to our athletic community by being South Puget Sound Director of FCA, Fellowship Christian Athletes. This girl is so awesome. Y'all don't want to miss this part one of the Haley Marsh series. I'll see y'all on part two. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my pod where I'm pushing positivity, purpose, and peace to all student athletes to help y'all overcome adversity in sports and in life. If you are new to this pod, I'm posting every first Friday of the month. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if this content is helpful to you. On the pod, I have Haley Marsh, and I'm so excited to have her on the pod, not only because she's dope, not only because she played at the next level, not only because she's the South Puget Sound Director of FCA, and if you don't know what FCA is, it's Fellowship Christian Athletes, but also because I just love your story. Mm -hmm. I love your testimony. I feel like it's very similar to mine in regard to just God chasing you down, restoring you. Mm -hmm. um, as we're seeking our dreams, we can get easily caught up in things that don't give us that fulfillment. So it really resonated with me and I'm excited to get into a little bit of that in our pod and just have you on. So thank you. Yay. I'm excited to be here. So thanks for having me. Yes. And we talked about this before. Mm -hmm. but this was a full circle yes god connection yes like you hit me up on instagram mm -hmm. to volunteer for fca mm -hmm. and i remember looking on your instagram like what <laughs> like she's doing the same thing i want to do <laughs> like you know helping student athletes yeah and then also helping them steward their relationship with god mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah i got like i gotta i gotta get involved i gotta yeah. connect yeah so it's just crazy mm -hmm. It's just crazy. Like 10 years mm -hmm. have passed since we played together. Right. And so it, you just never know who's going to come back in your life. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I just think God is, it's just so kind of him to like reconnect those of us who have the same mission, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like, this is not an accident at all. Like there's, there, there's so many other people like that were in our spaces. So I'm like, I just, I'm so grateful absolutely well. yeah absolutely so before we start we're gonna do some icebreakers okay you know what i mean to <laughs> yes. just kind of get the vibes going yes. so it's not so <laughs> tell me your deepest darkest <laughs> you know so for our first icebreaker question are you ready mm -hmm. window seat or aisle seat mm. you know it okay it depends on the time of the flight if the flight is during the day and i'm not mm. gonna be sleeping I'll take an aisle, but right. if it's like late at night and I, or I'm feeling tired or whatever, then I would pick a window so I can lay my head on the, you know, yep. put my blanket there. So I totally agree. I have nothing Back to add. Forth. Yep. <laughs> I think that's a great strategy. Absolutely. <laughs> what is the weirdest movie you've ever seen? The weirdest movie? Mm-hmm. Oh man. Um, okay, there's one that I'm thinking of, but I can't remember the name mm -hmm. because it was so weird that I like, right. tried to forget it. Right. So I'm gonna go with Fight Club because just mm. like the whole purpose of like Fight Club is that you don't talk about Fight Club, and then he like wakes up in the end and like fight like he was dead the whole time. It was just like, have you seen Fight Club? No. Okay, don't watch it. Don't it's watch it. It's not very it. good. <laughs> wow. But some people love it. Yeah. You either love it or you hate it, but it's weird yeah for sure yeah um the weirdest movie i've seen recently mm -hmm. is dumber and dumber 
It was it mm -hmm. Dumb and Dumber. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you seen that? I haven't. It's like with Will Ferrell okay. and some other guy that kind of plays those type of weird okay. roles. Yes. <laughs> um, my boyfriend played it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why are you making me watch this? <laughs> I didn't even finish it. It was killing my brain yes. cells. <laughs> it, and he already knows, like, it's hard for me to watch movies. Okay. Um, never really been a TV movie girl. Mm -hmm. Like, always outside, working out. If I wasn't, I was, like, playing dolls. I played dolls and T-set probably to, like, seventh grade. Oh, my God. Until, like, A, you got Let's serious, go. for real, you know? Yeah. And then if it wasn't that, I was, like, doing poetry, doing my nails, anything that I could do listen to music. I was a music oh, girlie. Okay, okay. Anything I could do, I would listen to music. It wasn't my first instinct to watch movies, movies. or TV. Okay. So that, <laughs> I was like, no, you're definitely not getting my time. Right. <laughs> so, right. okay. Right. Fight Club. Fight Club. We don't recommend. We don't That's recommend. just our humble opinion. It might be a hot topic, though, because it can be some people's favorite movie. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. We don't like it, though. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> so this one, okay, Bachelor number three. What's your? <laughs> did you get that? Yes. <laughs> Took me a second. Sorry. <laughs> I got it's it. okay. <laughs> I love Shrek. Okay. That's, that's one of my. That's a movie that I watched. Okay. <laughs> so I always quote it. Anyways, it okay. comes out sometimes. <laughs> um, what's your elevator pitch to aliens for why they should abduct you? Why they should abduct me? In this, in this, I like want to get abducted. Yes. I don't think I could. I don't want to be abducted. <laughs> I don't have an elevator pitch. I would say please okay, don't say, take me. Okay, say they're super cool and nice aliens that you want that to I like. Want and to then know. this world is just like so bad. Mm. Oh, okay. My elevator pitch. I would say that I'm really good at um, like hosting people and I will be like their hosts oh. and I will like provide parties for them to do and like create parties and fun adventures for them and so they should take me because I will be the one who will help them have fun with bet. them. Yeah. No, I like that because yeah. joy is important. Like yeah. we need to have fun. Yeah. And make their space pretty and whatever. Mm, so, okay, home nice, decor. Yeah. A nice like, okay, we're having a party and I'll bring the all the food and like the tablecloth and a table setting and make it a nice little event. Amen. Yeah. No, I like that answer. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> That's really good. Okay, last one. First, think of a Disney character. Okay. Who is it? Uh, Cinderella. What would their dating app say? Mmm. <sighs> Curfew. Total oh, lock. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Crazy shoe game. Oh, of course. And multiple personalities. Oh, because she, like, she has a disorder. <laughs> no, but she like, you know, moonlights as Cinderella, and during the day she is like the worker at the house. You That's crazy I mean? how you <laughs> summarize that as multiple personalities. <laughs> like not two different jobs, but multiple personalities. <laughs> hey, we're not gonna get a date. She's not gonna get a date. Okay. <laughs> you can tell I'm really versed. In right. Game. Right. <laughs> Cinderella got multiple personalities, y'all. It's all right. She does. We all need love. She does. Amen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. girls. So let's get into <laughs> it. <laughs> let's get into it. Okay. Share with us, Haley Marsh. Mm -hmm. How did you grow up and how did you get into sports? Yeah. Okay, crazy flip. Right. There. <laughs> um, yeah, who am I? I grew up in the church um my dad was a pastor and before he passed away um and then it was me and my sister um and my mom and she eventually got remarried um and in that like time between my stepdad and my step siblings coming like we were um you know kind of just like looking for what life would be like now that our family looked different mm -hmm. right like without the head of our household there like um 
they were just my mom was kind of just I think like trying to find something for me to do and so she was like okay go play soccer mm -hmm. and so I did and then um I got really tall and then somebody was like hey you should come play fifth grade basketball right and I was like okay cool um and so uh fast forward like was just kind of doing this as something to do and then in eighth grade it really became like I want to get better at this. I really hated that I was bad at basketball and mm -hmm. that everybody else on my like team, on my like junior high team and um, the team I was going to go play in high school with, they were super good. And so I was like embarrassed by how bad I was. And I right. was like, I want to get better. So then I started playing AAU basketball and was like, okay, this is and, like made the switch from like soccer to basketball mm -hmm. um, because I felt like I had a better... I had more support that way. Like right. people just, coaches started coming. Like this guy kind of just, his name's Jermaine Perry and he brought me along with him and his daughter. Like anytime him and Peyton would go work out, he'd be like, Haley, you're coming with me. And right. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, he sees something in me even though I'm bad. Like mm -hmm. guys, I was so bad. I was like running with the ball. Like I wasn't even dribbling. You didn't know the in, rules. In eighth grade, like right. so terrible. Mm -hmm. um, but he was like, no, I'm bringing you along with me. And so from that point, it was like a, a competition for myself of like, I want to get better at this. Mm -hmm. How good can I get? Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So when you were pursuing, at what point were you saying, I want to go to the next level? I want to play college basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say probably in like ninth grade because mm -hmm. I made a really like I made very radical strides like year after year from going from like literally running with basketball shooting with two hands like craziness to um making the varsity team at my school and not playing mm -hmm. like not playing mm -hmm. but recognizing that like I fit in with the people who were there right like I was good enough to be on their team like and they all had aspirations to go play college basketball so I was like man if they have aspirations to do that and I'm here with them, mm -hmm. hanging. Mm -hmm. Not well, but I was hanging. Yeah, yeah. The worst on the team, but I was there. Yeah. And I was like, well, why can't I do it? And then I was like, it just was the next step of, okay, to know and to push myself as far as like I want to go, college is the next step. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And when you were, when you made that, that decision, mm -hmm. were you thinking? I want to go D1, mm -hmm. D2, D, you know, because there's different levels for yeah. different people, different yeah. games. What was your expectation? Yeah. Um, I just didn't want to go to a community college. I was like mm -hmm. any, you know, I, I think that there's a, there's a really healthy way of thinking of like, where is my natural ability going to be best shown? And I was like, you know what? I... My parents didn't play any kind of sports. Like mm -hmm. they were theater choir kids. Like right. the fact that like I can like run and like be remotely athletic is, a is like a miracle. <laughs> Absolutely. Like right. the the biggest person in my family, well, I guess my uncle was really good at baseball, but like my immediate family, like sports was not That's, something mm -hmm. yeah, that like was an expectation for us. And so for me I had to have that realistic conversation with myself of like, okay, so really started playing basketball in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. D1 body types, I don't really fit. I'm 5'9". Mm -hmm. I like to play the post. There's no 5'9 posts in the D1 sector, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's a small that's post. That's so funny right? because I played post in Nevada, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> okay, you did. No, but I didn't like it, so. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. But it was good. I'm, I'm glad I got to serve my team. <laughs> you were versatile. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. So in, in my own heart, it was like, a, in my mind, it was like, what is realistic for me to go and actually be able to play and do what I want to do, right? Because it didn't make sense for me, seeing all the work that goes into being good at sports, right? Right. I didn't want to go somewhere just to go somewhere and then sit on the bench, right? I was like, I want to go somewhere where I can actually play and have a real shot of being, you know... A high level player right and so for me i was like d2 d2 was like okay i want to play d2 but ultimately the best fit for me is d3 right 
absolutely yeah so was there like any disappointment there or in that realization you felt empowered to pursue that level yeah i i would say there wasn't disappointment i think the mm -hmm. lord was really kind to me and like yeah. not even really making that and probably my parents like my parents were like Haley, it doesn't matter what wow. level you play at like you're gonna play college basketball like that's amazing man you know and so i think them really speaking life into me of like no matter where you go like it's gonna be wonderful yes. but real and you know i also had some conversations with my coaches it's like d1 d2 d3 like it doesn't matter like mm -hmm. there's been d2 kids or d2 teams who have beat d1 teams d1 teams have you know they d3 and d1 big difference but For sure. <laughs> right mm -hmm. but like it's not it's just about the the platform that you have it's not really about like you know where you're gonna go and i didn't need the clout of like oh i played d1 basketball mm -hmm. for me it was like i played college basketball that's good absolutely <laughs> no i love that you said that because so many athletes that are starting they may start late they may not mm -hmm. have all the resources they feel ashamed mm -hmm. if they can't go d1 it's like it's yeah. d1 or nothing yeah. athletes saying i want to go d1 they don't know how much mm -hmm. work it takes to get there they're not paying attention to the body types to the athleticism yeah like you were alluding to, there yeah. are just certain body types, height, things that are God given that yeah. give people the ability to play at higher levels, yeah. right? If you think about the NBA, yeah, seven footers, right? Can't do nothing about that. Like no. you can't go to the gym more and become seven foot, right? Yeah. So I love how you were, you came to that realization because not many athletes can. Yeah. It's like, oh, if I don't go D one, then I'm poop or. Yeah. I am, you know, or I'm not worthy or I'm not this. And it's like, no, there's a level for everybody yeah. for every circumstance yeah. work and right. take what you can get. You know right. what I mean? And and that's the other part is this is funny because it's bringing up like, I'm going to expose myself here real quick. Expose. Okay. We, <laughs> Curtis play and Todd Beamer. Do you remember this? At the Martin Luther King, because <laughs> of my team played me and team at the Martin Luther King tournament at the Shower Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. We come out like we were, I was feeling good, but I was like a little nervous because it was like, you guys were talking a little mess. I remember that. Not me. Not you. Not me. <laughs> Miss Haley did not because right. I knew where we were. Okay. okay. But some of my teammates probably were talking right. some mess. Sorry. Absolutely. And so we get there. Anyways, okay. 24 to 1. We had scored one point in the first quarter. That's why you guys had scored 24. Okay. Wow. Like reflecting after that game, it was really like we left and i was like did did my team give 100 percent effort we mm -hmm. absolutely did did my team prepare the mm -hmm. way that they needed to prepare we absolutely did were there things that like we needed to fix absolutely but like ultimately in my mind that was the perfect showcase of like how many girls from your team went d1 on that from that team was that um like are we the same eight are we the same year you're, you're above me so it would have been your I, class was it I'm wondering, was that my last year at Beamer? My, I think it was your junior, junior year. Okay, that team, there was like, there was like eight, eight that right? went D one, and there was like third, like additional four to five that went to the next level. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And so when I was out there, I just felt literally like there was girls six feet taller than me like there were girls that like i literally couldn't like not i was six doing feet taller than you though not sorry, no, six <laughs> inches six inches yeah six inches because no, I'm, I'm thinking of uh megan megan huff megan huff right mm -hmm. like and WNBA player like yeah literally that's never gonna be me my body is not like that now if i had aspirations to do that and that was like a goal that i wanted and needed like maybe that would look different but for me it was just like the amount of work that I'm already putting in, like, I don't have more to give to mm. get to that point. Right. And ultimately, like, D3, D2, your life is still basketball all the time. Seriously. And so, like, I literally can't imagine being a D1 athlete because of how hard my life was mm. when I was at levels a little bit lower. Like For sure. So, for me, it was a great fit. Yes. And, you know, there are some athletes that go D1 and they're like, I need more of a D2, D3 yeah. pace. Yeah. 
and that's nothing to be ashamed of yeah because it's still like you still get there and you're like i'm put i'm working on basketball 50 hours a week and i have college other things and i have to have a job like because i don't have a scholarship the job, absolutely like you don't get scholarships d3 right, right? and so right. then you're like you're really a student athlete and it was taking over my life so like Mm. I don't think I could do more. Like, I literally right. didn't have the capacity. Right. And that's okay. That is okay. That is okay. There's definitely trade-offs in the yeah. grind, for sure. Yeah. Whereas, like, D1, if you're on scholarship, there's that high-level grind, but yeah. you don't have a job. Right? Like, yeah. that is your job. That is your job. And then when you go D3, maybe the play is different. Maybe the commitment could be different between yeah. teammates. But you have more things to take care of by yeah. yourself. The training facilities isn't as, you know, good or the mm -hmm. rehab, the whatever. So there are trade-offs, yeah. but there's a space for everyone. Yeah. Is the point, right? Yeah, so I love that. Yeah. I love that. In your journey, mm -hmm. this is kind of like a duh, because I feel like everyone has, but I want to talk to you about fear of failure. The question's gonna be, have you ever experienced fear of failure? Like, yes. Yeah. But like, share with us a time where you had fear of failure and how you overcame it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. This is a great one because this is like, I would say the probably biggest thing that happens with athletes that I see is that we're all performance Base. we're all perfectionists like if we don't do it 100% right we don't want to do it we want to do it until we can do it 100% right girl right and we girl. can't like we physically cannot be perfect and so you're gonna fail all the time right like all the time even mm -hmm. if you have the best game of your life there's gonna be mistakes yes. in that that constitutes as a failure right mm -hmm. and so I had this really um you know, through eighth grade to, I mean, senior year of high school, probably, it was like, just this, like, uh, tug of, I wanted to do what I needed to do for the team, but I was so scared yes. to do it and then fail that I just didn't do anything. And mm -hmm. so I would be out there, so really heavily in like eighth and ninth grade, moving into 10th grade, I would just go out on the floor and like, I wouldn't try anything. And I would just be a, I would be useless right like I wouldn't shoot the ball I'd be afraid to like come help or dribble because I didn't want to get the ball taken away from me um I would like not defend the person I should be defending because I wanted to defend the easier one because I would get scared that the person would score right like all of my the whole my whole purpose on the court was to not fail yeah and what I found is I would play like one minute and then my coach would take me out I'd play one minute my coach would take me out and Jermaine, like uh, this coach who I had was such a heavy influence on me because he would take me out and then I would be like, um, you know, one day I asked him, I was like, why am I only playing like a minute? And he just like put his arm around me and he was like, because you don't try anything. Mm. I can't put you out there because you're not helping the team. You're actually That's hurting good. the team because you're not doing anything. They don't even have to guard you. He was like, hey, they don't even have to guard you. Your team's playing four on five. <laughs> because I was so scared to shoot the ball that I wouldn't like because I didn't want to miss that I yep. wouldn't even help my team right yep. and so he said the only way and I was like well I just don't want to fail and I don't want to make a mistake and he said the only way that you can fail or make a mistake is if you don't try and I was like well okay and then I went out there and I started trying stuff and some of it didn't work right and some of it was like he had to pull me aside and he's like okay we're not gonna do that but thanks for trying try this instead right and so it's like um thinking about not failing or yeah. like trying not to fail is not the point it's yeah. what can I do to help my team and sometimes that means being willing to be humble enough to make a mistake yes yeah. I love that when you were talking i thought about some of my games in college in high school i'm probably experienced it in middle school mostly when it got to high school i don't think i had as much fear of failure um as far as like game to game i yeah. had fear of failure overall in my journey yeah because there's levels to the fear 
Um, Absolutely. but I thought of those games in college, right? You're like pissed off at your coach mm -hmm. and you're like, I don't even play, but it's like, when you go out there, what are you giving? Yeah. And there were games where like, I would have a shot mm -hmm. and I didn't take it cause I didn't want to miss. Cause it was like, if I miss coach is going to take me out. But guess what? Mm -hmm. If you don't make the right read, mm -hmm. which is taking the shot, mm -hmm. you're going to get, get taken, taken out. out. Yes. And yes. it makes me think of sometimes the only way out is through. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you have to be willing to be humble enough to be like, I'm human. Mm -hmm. And if I want to help my team, I have to make the right plays. Mm -hmm. I have to be willing to try my hardest and learn. Yeah. Because it's selfish mm -hmm. if you don't. Yeah. You, you're you overly concerned about self-preservation. And I love um, one of the videos that Kobe Bryant has that has gone viral, all of his videos go viral, but the one that I especially like is when he talks about getting over yourself. Mm -hmm. He's like, get over yourself. You're going to miss. Do you know how many gaming shots I've missed? Yeah. But you know how many I've made? Right. And that's why they call me iconic, but I'm not afraid to make a mistake. That's the only way I can get better. Yeah is by putting yourself out there full speed, 100%. Yeah. Because I know a lot of athletes, um, even in, as a personal story, right? Like we can, we can feel like, oh, it's better if I just stay timid. Mm -hmm. It's not. You're not the best version of yourself and you're gonna be on the bench. Like a thousand and ten percent. You can feel the vibe, the energy, like you're scared. Yeah. Or you look like you don't really give a freak. So you can <laughs> right. just come right here. And sit, you know what? And sit down. So sit down that's seat. so important for athletes to understand. Like, yeah. worry about doing your best and doing your job. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. Unless your coach is like, don't take that shot. Like, don't take that shot. Right? Right. Unless you've been in the gym practicing and, you know, whatever. Um what I tell athletes, I'm like, if you're going to take it and it's not what you're supposed to take, you better make it. You know 100%. what I mean? And if you keep making it and you shut me up, then cool. But um, other than that, it's like, if that's the right read, you got to make it. Yeah. It, you can't say, oh, I don't want to turn the ball over. No, if you were supposed to make that backdoor pass and she was open, you're going to look mad goofy <laughs> if you didn't make the pass and you're going to get taken out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, that's important. Right. And to piggyback off that it's yeah. like you have to have put in the work and the preparation to be ready for that and have already gotten your failure out in, in practice right Correct. so it's like okay let me get my extra work in let mm -hmm. me put my shots up let me try these things and practice or like by myself in the gym yes. and fail yeah and fail a lot yes. so then you get to the point where the mistakes don't come as quickly because you've like the goal should not be to never make a mistake. Mm -hmm. The goal should be how long can I go right. in stretches within the game yep. that I'm not making one. Absolutely. Right? And the the um, way to gauge that then would be like, okay, this game I've only made, you know, my mistakes went from 500 right. to like two or right. whatever. Right. You know. Absolutely. Film? Film, yeah. Huge. Big. Growing up, cameras recordings i think they were still like coming into fruition we didn't have it as much mm -hmm. but now like the world is your oyster yeah if you are growing up now as an athlete watch film watch games watch yourself right and we don't want to be obsessed with it because there's that healthy balance mm -hmm. of just like okay now you're not giving yourself enough brain space to breathe and just read and react right you don't want to yeah. be a robot but film tells you a lot you can learn a lot by watching film. Mm -hmm. That's something I wish I did earlier yeah. in my career because I would have grown like even more just at a faster rate. But you're right, it starts in practice. Mm -hmm. It starts training and training by yourself. There was a trainer, um, he was making a video. It was a real, I can't remember his name, but he was talking about like how kids, they just train with a trainer. Mm -hmm. Like they don't have any creative times by themselves. Mm -hmm. And some of the best athletes, they have that creative time by themselves. Yeah. And I don't know about you, Haley, you can speak to this, like the times where I felt so bad or I felt frustrated or I felt mentally blocked, mm -hmm. when I had my creative time by myself, 
I was allowed to remember why I started playing. I was able to gain my confidence again. I was able to be like, I can do this. Like, you know, mm. that important, the importance in having that private time with your craft as well, like it, it all fits in the puzzle. Yeah. Would you agree? A hundred percent. And yeah. And I think that's really important to highlight because even as you're saying that, like I didn't have creative times of like, let me just um, try and figure something out or right. like I didn't have enough time like in my mind every I was like a race against the clock like mm -hmm. I started in eighth grade and I was like I have to be this good in right. four years like I gotta get my stuff done right? right and so I didn't have enough time to like you know people would say like just go try and figure it out like mm -hmm. see how the ball spins and yep. like figure it out right and I was like I don't have time for that but the time that I got in the gym where it was just me and the ball and the hoop and I was like okay these are the things that I know I can do because I've done them and someone's taught me how to do them and I'm just gonna perfect them then you're there and you start getting confidence because nobody's there telling you what to do Absolutely. you're like okay yeah my stroke looks nice now because mm -hmm. I'm doing it and I don't need my trainer to tell me good job or right. like I don't need my trainer to tell me to move my elbow in right right like no I know how to do this and I can fix it yes and so not having to rely on someone exactly like what that's you're saying. the point yeah relying so you know and it grows your confidence yep in your decision making yeah in your decision making in your skill um I know finishing, like when I was practicing finishing around the basket, like what mm -hmm. one of your coach recommended, just feeling how the ball comes off. Like yeah. I was able to excel my game, but that, start, that started in private. Mm -hmm. I did work with the trainer on those things, yeah. but I have to gain confidence in myself in the dark first. And I think athletes make the mistake of trying to do it in the light. Mm -hmm on top of making a mistake right and that's when you get ridiculed that's when it's right. like what are you doing right. because it does come off selfish maybe that's not your intent mm -hmm. it's like why are you doing that move like i haven't seen that and you look crazy i can tell <laughs> you haven't practiced it you saw that on a highlight and you thought it was sweet to just tween tween pull up at you know at steph curry range right but you can barely make free throws <laughs> right. so you know if i the dark Doing things in the dark in your private time, like the Bible says, whatever it gets done in the dark is gonna come to light. That's bad and good things. Yeah, we just gotta stay encouraged. Like it matters. Right. Absolutely. I think sometimes we can get discouraged. Like this won't matter. Yeah. Someone's not seeing it. Yeah. Someone's not with me. Yes. It always matters. Yes. How and what did you say last time we were talking? How you do some things is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. My coach would say that too it's so true yeah. and it will come out you will reap whatever you sow right Absolutely. yeah mm -hmm. so that's that's all good stuff i wanted to also ask you about your relationship with basketball mm. for me i had a toxic relationship <laughs> with basketball and yeah. this is we're not even talking about coaches playing we're, i'm talking about reflecting and analyzing myself, mm -hmm. my heart posture. I'm not even talking about external things. And there's a lot of external things that goes on in sports that yeah. affects your experience. I'm talking about internally. I had a toxic relationship with basketball. So I'm curious, what was your relationship with basketball? Yeah, this is so good. Such a great question.